G'day everyone, day four, simple RF power meter and a bit about power measurement in general. Um, it's a really simple circuit, I put it together on this little bit of board here, you can see I've got an SMA connector and circuit diagram simple, we've got a 50 ohm load because most things in RF are measured in 50 ohms, it's just easier, most test equipment's designed for that. There's a long history and quite an interesting tale about why 50 ohms was picked, um, you could probably look it up on the web and yeah, have a good read about it. Anyway, RF comes in, it's terminated into this 50 ohm resistor, so it will develop a voltage across that 50 ohm resistor, and we use a low capacitance shock de diode to pick off the peak voltage and charge up a capacitor. So we get some DC voltage across this capacitor, which is essentially the peak voltage of the RF waveform across this resistor minus the forward voltage drop of the diode. Also, as the frequency increases, the capacitance of that diode starts to become significant, and this termination no longer looks like a pure 50 ohm resistance. The on, for this diode it's probably like 2 picofarad, something like that, so for low frequencies, HF, it's fine, as you get up into VHF it starts to become more problematic and you need to compensate for it, either just by calibrating it, um, or yeah, measuring in some way, or actually modelling and maybe putting a compensation network in front of it. There are other ways to measure RF power, um, on my website I will link to it, there are log chips which are quite um, useful because they give you much more dynamic range. For small voltages where the forward voltage drop of this diode is quite large with respect to the RF voltage developed across the resistor you start to get major errors and generally you don't use this scheme below you know minus I guess minus 10 minus 20 dBm maybe. You can use the diode in the square law region but that's an entirely different subject and we could talk about that later. Suffice to say this is for power ranges in the you know the milliwatt to 10 to 100 milliwatts. The actual resistors that I put on here are quarter watt resistors. I put four 200 ohm resistors in parallel so there's you know 50 ohms effective and reasonable power handling. I think they're quarter watt so this is basically a one watt dummy load with a diode off it so that you can pick off the voltage. Okay so this is often confusing to people this RMS idea. So RMS is kind of a, a way of defining an equivalent voltage that would put the same amount of power into a load as what you know the real is a DC voltage basically that, that would do the same work as an AC voltage. You can imagine that if you've got an AC waveform that's a pure sinusoid here and you bulldoze, you, you, you flip everything around the, the axis so that you know basically ideally rectify it so that you've got hump, hump, hump and then you come along with a bulldozer and you flatten it off so that you fill it up to be a perfect DC voltage. If you did that, you'd find that it's, you know, 0.707 times the peak voltage of the AC waveform. You can do the math and work that out yourself, just with the, have a look at RMS on Wikipedia, there's a pretty good article about how it's defined. And the important thing to know is that for VRMS is basically the peak voltage, just from the zero from the midline to the peak, divided by root two. Or if you're measuring peak to peak, it's divided by root 8. I actually find RMS kind of confusing and annoying because almost always you're dealing with a waveform that is not a sinusoid or when you haven't decomposed it into a bunch of different sinusoids. So true RMS is a completely different subject where you actually have to do the integral over the entire data that you've collected. It's super confusing. For most purposes when we're measuring RF power it's probably a pure sinusoid or something like a pure sinusoid and we just use you know, basically the peak and assume that the average power is proportional to the square of the peak of the voltage. So the, most, the two most important equations obviously in all of electronics in many ways, Ohm's law and power being current times voltage. This is the instantaneous power, not average power. So what you're measuring here is sort of a proxy for that average power. So power average, if we take all those assumptions into account, the square of the peak voltage, or the square of the peak to peak voltage divided by either 2 or 8 times the resistance that it's across. So in our system we've got 50 ohms, so it's divided by 100 or 400. Pretty simple. Now dBm, you'll see this unit a lot, it's used a lot in RF. It's a logarithmic unit based on the 1 milliwatt reference power. So normal power ratio logarithms are here, so whatever power, average power you measure, 
you divide it by one milliwatt, which is 0 0.001 watts, and then you take log 10 of it and multiply by 10 because that's deci is, you know, bells. Anyway, so super simple, pretty straightforward mathematically. The circuit today, you can knock it together in like five minutes. It's, you should probably, every RF person should have one. It's kind of like the most fundamental thing that you should have in your RF test kit as a way to measure RF power. Okay, so this particular unit, I actually spent some time and calibrated it. So what we have here is a measure of the peak-to-peak -peak input voltage that I put in just with a signal source at 1 meg and 10 megahertz and the output voltage in DC that I saw across the um, termination capacitor. And you can see there's not very much difference between the 1 megahertz and the 10 megahertz. It starts to roll off beyond about 40 megahertz and there's no input blocking capacitor on the front end. That's kind of an important point. You could actually calibrate this at DC if you wanted to by injecting DC into here with an equivalent DC peak value power. And it's close. I mean, obviously the, the dynamics of the, the diode, the capacitance isn't there in that case, but the forward voltage drop is. So you can use that as a proxy for low frequencies. And if you do the same calibration, you'll actually find that it holds out pretty well to tens of megahertz. So if you don't have a way to generate or measure RF amplitude, so you don't have a scope, say, and you can't look at the, the amplitude of your RF waveform and measure it with any accuracy, you can generate a DC voltage, like with a power supply and resistor and a pot, whatever. Um, you've got to be a little bit careful because the impedance has to be low with respect to 50 ohms. But whatever you voltage you measure across this resistor and whatever voltage you measure here, you can still get a pretty good calibration curve for the diode itself. Okay, so we have our curve here. That's voltage to voltage, which is not particularly useful. This is probably more useful. This is actually the RF input power in dBm and the output in voltage. So you could obviously fit a curve to this if you really wanted to. It's probably easier just to do the math based on what you measure in this case. Measured, you get your actual RMF, RF peak to peak voltage and then you do the math based on that. On my website, and I'll link this in the description, is a table, which is kind of handy. Um, should probably write a calculator one day to do the same thing, but it relates dBm to power in and microwatts to watts, to voltage RMS and voltage peak and voltage peak to peak, all for 50 ohm systems. So it's just a long, useless table, but it's it's pretty handy. Like. It hits the you know the important points like the one watt kind of thing and the half watt. In general, with um, with decibels, you get used to it pretty quickly. Like three dB is basically a doubling. Okay, I think that's enough for today. We'll um, talk a bit more about this in maybe in other later videos. As far as what's happening tomorrow. I don't know, um, maybe some more RF things. Now we've got a way to measure power. We could go on to making um, something that actually purposefully generates RF maybe. Don't know. Anyway, as usual, questions, um, comments below and uh, I'll get back to you. Alrighty, bye.